Welcome to week two of Foundations of Sociological Theory. This week, we focus on the introductory chapter in the Dillon textbook, where Professor Dillon thumbnails the emergence of sociology as a scientific discipline, a special field with its own methodology and its own focus, but one that is part of an emerging emphasis on science in Europe and in the United States. Sociology emerged in the 19th century as an independent field of study with analysis and critique of social structures. Thus, the initial sociologists were, especially in Europe, largely focused on society as a whole that is, society as a human creation, and one only recently emerging from uh, an overview of a set of social arrangements that were divinely ordained. In the 18th century, with societal transformation paved the way for sociology to emerge, it changed how people think about themselves and about society. Most of these transformations uh, w could be viewed under the umbrella of the emergence of political equality or democracy and in the context of the Industrial Revolution, which resulted in a complete transformation of uh, the class structure in Europe. Thus, uh, especially in Europe, there was a rejection of the inherited privilege of mon uh, monarchies and an elevation of freedom and equality or democracy. So in France, the French Revolution in 1779 emphasized liberty, equality, and fraternity. The American War of Independence was slightly different in that it was the emancipation of the American colonies from uh, a, a European monarchy, in this case England, but also the proclamation to the Declaration of Independence in 1776 that all men are created equal uh, and that we the people. Th these changes emerged in the context or, or in tandem with uh, Enlightenment thought that is an emphasis on reason and rationality. Uh, the idea that individuals or human beings have innate reason and the ability to think about things themselves and to govern themselves. Of course, many would foresee the capacity for innate reason in human beings as coming about much earlier, uh, a, a topic that by far transcends or goes beyond or extends beyond what is possible in this brief overview lecture. But the idea of inalienable rights, uh, it takes place in the context of these emerging republics in Europe and the debates about the rights of individuals vis-a-vis -vis the order and common good of society. Of course, there's an enormous emphasis on uh, science and the scientific argument as part of the emergence of sociology in the late 18th century and on empiricism, uh, actually a, a Greek term, but it Empiricism emphasizes observation and what comes from experiential knowledge, or that is, comes from information gathered through the senses, things that can be known and explained as opposed to uh, things that cannot be proven or corroborated with data. Thus, a, a high emphasis on the use of reason and science in this context produced a human social progress both uh, in, as part of the Industrial Revolution, but uh, science is the way forward. In earlier centuries, uh, both Copernicus and Galileo posed enormous challenges to uh, religious and theological truths. These were in earlier centuries. Thus, the Enlightenment emphasized reason and scientific thought rejecting or displacing, to a certain extent, the power of religion, myth, superstition, and tradition. The emphasis or positivism, with positivism is the idea that 
We can discover things through the observation of patterns, including uh, at the societal level, that there are regularities and laws regarding how things work. They're not concerned with a critique of society per se, but rather with documenting and affirming the regularities of, socio of social life. And thus, in sociological analysis, our aim, uh, as especially in sociological theory, is explanation, understanding, and emancipation, that is, the fostering of empowerment and equality on the part of all members of society. We use or deploy a plurality of research methods and a plurality of uh, theoretical perspectives. In the in introductory chapter, Dylan uh, thumbnails five sociologists who are, are emphasized less extensively in later chapters, August Comte, Saint-Simon, uh, Harriet Martineau, uh, William Diltai, and de Tocqueville. These are all foundational figures in the uh, initial emergence or foundational levels of sociology, and their emphasis are, are, are different to a certain extent than later theorists. But overall, in this chapter, Dylan provides for you a grounding in sociological theory. She discusses the theoretical frameworks which are elaborated later by sociologists' core founding theorists uh, in the weeks to come, Marx, Durkheim, and Weber, as well as a broader range of ideas and concepts that comprise contemporary theory. She demonstrates her, her approach in the whole book will be to demonstrate the applicability of sociological theory and its relevance to helping make sense of the complexity of the social world. Uh, and this particular chapter, she's highlighted largely the historical background and its significance in the emergence of sociology as an intellectual discipline. Uh, she has discussed the influence of the Enlightenment thought, a Comte's vision of sociology, and as the scientific field of social inquiry, which highlights the subject matter of sociology, but also its rather complex modes of analysis and interpretation.